Hello peeps, it's your boy Skinny Penis today with a very lengthy video. Two replays of Morceau are going to be talked about. Essentially not talking about uh, the ship specific or any balancing issues or whatever, just, just straight up talking about uh, what I'm doing. So we can hop right in. First game is Hotspot. I think there's going to be a storm and the matchmaking is as follows we have three dds two cruisers only uh, one of them even a stalingrad which is very good for me uh petro also kind of nice uh, it's better than most uh, idp mhe spammers five battleships and a shokaku we ignore the submarine at this point um es essentially french dds are really good at ditching submarines you're most likely too fast and too easy to it's too easy for you to disengage the submarines are very unlikely to actually catch you so you can ignore him the issues in this matchmaking are more or less the double harugumo but since it's a division and it's the only division you can essentially immediately ditch them if you just remember where division spawns are i spawned middle which is not favorable for Marceau generally want to be spawning deep on the flanks in Marceau and clap so you can abuse timings early and pretty much challenge the enemy DD on the flank without uh, his team actually uh, yet moved out of spawn or able to assist him. But the division spawn on hotspot is C cap, that's where the divisions clash. Um, and obviously, if there's only one division, they're most likely there. The only case in which divisions don't spawn there is when it's like a triple cruiser, triple DD, triple battleship diffs, or carrier diffs. Those can vary. Most likely only the triple cruiser and carrier diffs are actually, or maybe, spawned somewhere else. The triple battleships and triple DDs are still locked. And that's why I hate these kind of diffs, because they fuck up spawn systems so much. If there's only four battleships and someone plays triple BB, they might literally leave two thirds of the map without a battleship for their team. And they're just going to be stuck on one side. So what I do here is I go towards A. The Z gets spotted through our carrier and obviously for me at this range to his teammates there's no no threat yet of being actually shot and hit at by the enemy uh, ships i have speed boost running and the z obviously instantaneously smokes since i mean i'm i'm focusing him i think my battleships and groningen are most likely ignoring him i'm actually trying to stay here in this area because i have the hope that the groningen will actually hydro him out i'd hope that the groningen goes towards the flanks so he spots the flanks and i can go in front of the cap maybe but the Groningen, for some reason, is, I think, uh, at this moment, Stalin radar, or he's not actually, uh, or he's actually in the hydro range of the Z while not hydroing himself back. Groningen has 5, Z 46 is 5.5 kilometers hydro. So there's a chance of the Z actually out hydroing him. But I think he's radared most likely. Um, yeah, there it is. Essentially, I'm trying to just stay behind the, Z, uh, the Groningen f uh, at this time. You c I could also go to the flank. Uh, at the moment it would make sense, but I'm somehow still hoping that after the Stalin Raider is off, the Groning Man will go in, tr which he currently does, try to contest again, and somehow Hydra out the Z, or the Z is pushing. Uh, it doesn't seem like this is going to actually happen, so I'm trying to move over to the flank, uh, still with speed boost on. So um, the only thing I have to care now is, and that's also why I'm not going around the corner, the Iowa gets spotted and he's already too close. Like, the enemy team, because there was no spotting from our side on the flank, moved up insanely far. That's something you can also... It's some game impact that is not really measured in terms of numbers, like damage or kills. But being able to early spot flanks deep with French DDs is deterring the enemy from pushing. It can. Obviously, there's some... Uh, let's say monkeys out there that's pretty much disregarded and run in anyways. But in general, the earlier you spot the enemy team and if you keep them permalit, uh, they don't really know what's going on, but they're spotted. I mean, obviously they get that kind of information from the game, so they tend to like disengage. Kind of the same thing the Iowa did now. He was randomly spotted and then he started turning out. Uh, I have to be careful here because of the Z now rushing, or he has rushed out the Groningen, but I'm not hydroed. His hydro is off. Uh, as, y as you can see, the 3.9 kilometer uh, AA range are a pretty good indicator. He's well within uh, those 3.9 and I'm not hydro so he's somewhere behind that smoke um, he does play RPF so he is most likely going to know what I'm currently doing but uh, because I am not spotted I obviously can pretty much pinpoint his position as well he's either in the smoke or behind the smoke but I will probably catch him uh, here and be able to spot him 
which exactly now happens. He's really close. I am obviously going for this kill at the moment because he pushed so far up. I hope that he doesn't have a smoke, but something like this, I mean, he laid a smoke like one minute ago, or like one and a half minutes, and there he is. He has a smoke right up, so now you have to disengage. Uh, it is also likely that he might actually have Hydro back up soon as well, so you literally have to disengage here, you can blind fire a bit. Uh, and an additional problem is coming in, the carrier is perma spotting me. The carrier is actually going for me with AP bombs, uh, which is fairly cringe and trash, like I don't know what he's doing. Uh, problematic though, because he's unintentionally spotting me in front of a smoked Z. Um, though I'm not going to lose a lot of HP, you can pretty much engage German DDs uh, very easily with French destroyers, since most of them shoot AP HE only and the HE has very h low alpha and on top of this you have French saturation so it takes them essentially ages as you can see 150 damage per hit I think he hit the gun but that would also be the damage if I'm saturated so now um, going for the flank was pretty much out of the question my two battleships behind me are both tier 9 not the best ones either Ruprecht and Minnesota especially long range support you can pretty much cancel it from them so they also didn't seem like they're like the best players in the world so essentially i would just uh go out there on the one two line i can throw 12 torps and then i pretty much have to spot only um i could theoretically open guns but what's the point like there's preussen with secondary spec in iowa and a stalin a stalin with very shell fast shell velocity running into me and if i get hit unfortunate and try to go dark the stalin could even follow up with a radar so i'm just like pretty much abusing the two battleships that are in base which is good they're like really passive in base trying to kite now uh, the heavy push on the a side so i'm just using them to pretty much tank and uh, take the time of the three ships pushing one two line and as you can see uh, at some point you notice that those three ships are really really committed on those two battleships and later on even on the hornet so you can kind of use this to your advantage what i'm trying to do now is going in towards mid because i thought or I believe that the submarine is going for a carrier. You could also go for the uh, Kurfis, but the Kurfis can go behind a rock, I think. So my thought is that the submarine somehow got carrier spotting and is trying to go for him now. That's what a lot of submarines do. And also the Z doesn't have smoke up, and my carrier is constantly flying in towards the middle. So maybe there's a chance that the Z overextends into me, uh, like further up north, so that I can catch him. He's only on 6k, I did a lot of damage already to him. and. Thing is, since I'm not going to uh, do a lot against the three full HP ships pushing on one two line, but the Jean Bard is a big problem for our team. The Jean Bard essentially decided to go nose in, and from the looks of it, I would believe that he goes nose in towards the C cap, which means all my ships in the C cap are pretty much flat broadside to him. But since Marceau has the option of 9km torps, I can now try to go in front of him. Uh, obviously, I believe here that the John Bart will just sit on the rock, nose in. It's like a fairly nice spot for him. Uh, he like he can't be shot at from our Minnesota Ruprecht and so on. Uh, but I could theoretically torp him. And also he's perfectly angled towards me. So I send both torp sets here. Um, also generally better if in those situations where you have 12 torps ready uh, to torp the corner. And the one or two torps you hit help massively with his... Uh, like with gunning him down because he has to manage his DCP better and he also gets a certain amount of damage especially if you hit the nose and it's unsaturated one torp does a good amount of damage and Jean Bart doesn't have that much for some interesting reason the Jean Bart because most likely because of the carrier drop is actually now running away which is really unfavorable um, if he would have just sat on the rock I could have farmed him pretty quick and he would have probably also eaten torps so change of plans now I have to kite up further because he's actually running it into the mid now I have to give more ground here. Uh, there's currently nothing I can do against the Z, but my daring is already looking for him. So it's essential now that the Jean Bart dies. Switching to AP here. Uh, he does have fire prevention, so there's very little point in spamming more HE. But AP on 32mm flat broadsides uh, plating does a lot of damage in Mars. So now he angles in, insta switch to HE again. Also his fire is about to come off. Yeah, there it is. And now you can set another fire again. Um, interestingly enough, our Hornet uses his uh, special bombers. I think he shits on him here. Yeah, correct. Oh, well, that's fairly nice. My three ships are still kiting in base, and as you can see, the Stalin is really greedy for them. Also, the Preuss and Iowa are wasting a lot of time, and I think they're like engaging those ships. So that gives me a lot of time to now also charm in with a bit of uh, fire damage and HE on the Iowa. Um, 
Theoretically, I could go into B, but I still know that the Z only has 6k HP. My daring is pretty much full HP. So, and there's very little spotting difference between both ships. So I'm pretty convinced that my daring will handle it. Uh, therefore, it's about time um, that those full HP ships are actually being dealt with. Like at some point, uh, those ships become a massive problem if they're full HP because I have to do damage over time with fires and HE. Um, so I'm not going to kill them quickly in the end of the match. Uh, there's no point. So at some point you ju just have to start pretty much open, uh, softening them up. And uh, getting nice hits in on the unsaturated superstructure is really good here. Also setting uh, constant fires on both targets. Like I'm intentionally not trying to get the double fire on the Iowa here. Uh, but rather trying to get a fire on the Preussen because double fire is insta DCP so I just let like one fire tick and there's another battleship that needs to burn at this point. Um, this is actually not like uh, necessarily damage greedy because they're both ignoring me but you can kind of also keep zoning both of them together if both of them receive fire otherwise I might end up in the situation where the full HP Iowa runs it into me uh, or where Iowa runs it into me I only focus him and the Preussen just stays full HP full HP full HP behind him and just p presses perma W because there's like no threat for him there I got the perma fire both of them DCP'd Iowa DCP obviously fairly long so um, I'd rather go for the Preussen fire quickly um, and yeah, as you can see, like no one is shooting those people. Now the daring is finally charming in on the Iowa, but the Preussen is completely free to do whatever he wants. So having the permanent uh, one fire on a superstructure, because he runs fire prevention as well, is really important at this point. I don't know if he's secondary spec yet, which is also a pretty big issue. Like for now I have the Iowa to farm, but I have to keep my distance from that Preussen. If he starts running it too uh, deep and I'm not uh, bailing early enough I might get caught in his secondaries and eat a lot of unfortunate damage. Thankfully I can ignore the Stalin as I said in the beginning telling by the minimap it's very likely he's just hyper focused and tunnel visioning on the carrier so you can ignore him and pretty much I'm just pacing myself behind the B cap now farming both of those battleships I mean there are no zin pushing the Iowa turned away now because you get um, DPM down a bit too hard but now we have the issue the Preussen is running it he's really healthy and he has a secondary spec and the secondary spec is telling by the amount of shells he sheds out, probably even 6 million module. And it's Lutyens. Like you can see like, if he gets... I mean, he won't get 100 hits on me. Uh, but theoretically, he could have proc, Lut could proc Lutyens as well. And then it's going to be a big shit fiesta inside his sec range. Stalingrad shot me now. So I have to pretty much give the Preussen broadside and bail from the Stalingrad. The Stalingrad is the most likely ship to actually hit me consistently. Uh, obviously, as you can see, he's focusing me because my Hornet is behind the rock. So what I'm doing now is trying to make uh, my way into the sea cap so I can abuse uh, islands to ditch the Preussen secondary range. There's no, not much point in actually kiting out to the 8, 9, 10 line um, because my Hornet will probably die and I just bait both ships deeper into my Hornet, which I hope may survive even a bit. And also, as you can see from my position here, the Stalin is outside of my gun range. So I could shoot the Preussen a bit here without even getting spotted. But the Stalingrad is turning in now and pushing, obviously, because he's literally mirroring the Hornet and trying to run him down. So um, Preussen needs to be farmed. And as you can see, it's a big issue. Like, no one shot that man ever. And even with my dot damage and the permafire he had, the man is so healthy that for me alone, it's really hard to get used to it. Thankfully, finally, my teammates actually pushed around C, so they're gaining ground in the enemy base. So pretty much now we have turned the map upside down. Uh, a bit disadvantageous because obviously their Preussen and Stalingrad are way deeper into our spawn and actually just already about to kill the carrier. Um, yes, as I said, I'm using the islands to ditch the secondary range. Otherwise, I could not fight that Preussen. Uh, I'm already I'm only on 7.8k, and I'm kind of like convinced at this point yeah, that the Stalin will never shoot me until the carrier is dead because he hasn't shot me uh, since the carrier was spotted again. So now the Preussen is going behind the rocks, time to switch for the Stalingrad, time to torp him as well. Uh, he's most likely keeping that course which means he comes into my secondary uh, torp range. He's not going to straight line towards the 10 line and hunt the carrier like this. He's most likely coming in towards uh, closing the distance towards me as well so he can be closer <coughs> to um, like towards me to raider me maybe later on or get into the cap. Um, the Preussen died, he finally got focused out by all our team uh, that was behind B. The Petro is weirdly reversing in cap which is fairly weird. 
Um, so nothing else I can do but like farm the starting ground that is ignoring me, which is fairly uh, <laughs> fairly nice. But that actually tends to happen a lot if you play gunboat DDs. Like since you're so maneuverable, agile, and you can pretty much switch position a lot on the map, um, it's fairly likely. Or it's very good for you to know when an enemy ship or group of ships focuses teammates so you can make use of their time that is not used to shoot you or that they're like distracted at to make uh, to get in some damage and especially with ships like smaland ragnar or Merceau, your damage is really really good like they only have to give you like a minute of free farm and they do drop a lot of hp obviously you can't nuke them that is fairly unlikely but um just just make use of it. That's also why I liked PT or still like PT a lot. I have uh, a spec now that I would run in like competitive because of some trainings and stuff. Um, but I would still play a PT normally just because I have uh, the feeling that with PT or it's not like a feeling, it's something that I like do a lot. Like If you have PT on you, you can pretty much notice immediately and all the time when people are trying to shoot your focus you use, so you can get the best value out of your time that you should farm. Um, since you have to manage your HP very well with the French DDs, there's like no coming back from the dead, like you don't have a heal. And the lower you are, the, most, uh, the more likely it is also that people focus Louis. Like if you drop yeah, right. below, for 5000 HP, it's very likely people start to <coughs> hyper focus you, so you can't fuck up anymore. So, I kited out the Stalingrad around the islands. Uh, sadly, he got my Hornet, but my Daring is doing a great job. He finally he got B in the middle, he also killed the Z, I think. He also spotted and turped and shot the Preussen. He was generally there to play the objective while I could deal with the heavy ships, full HP that had to be farmed. They legit had to be farmed, like you can't win <laughs> the games when the ships are full HP in the end and they can just sit in the caps and like you don't get them out of there anymore. Daring also kills the Harugumu and I just pretty much looked at the minimap, saw roundabout from where the planes ca uh, came and I'm trying to get the Shokaku now. Shokaku, great target. The entire ship is penable with your HE. I don't actually know if the deck is penable. Might be 25 or something. I don't know. But most of the Shokaku or Kaga, they're like very squishy towards DDHE and you can do a lot of damage really quick. Um, so the game is won by now. This is like something that you should look out for. Like if the earlier you start farming the battleship and trying to get the damage, the more likely it is you won't see the end game and these kind of juicers. It's like you're pretty much just harvesting and juicing out 50k for free on the Shukaku, he will never kill me. But if I would have started hyper farming on one two line the entire time, we might have first of all lost the game because I did help on the more important ships in the mid like the Jean Bard. Um, and also I would have probably dropped way more HP because if I'm in front of them, yes, maybe my teammates survive longer because I take a lot of hits, but I would also most likely eat more damage from three ships than probably focusing me, specifically also the Stalingrad that has a fairly easy time of hitting me. And there's also this engagement, it's like if I farm the Stalin that is pushing into me, but I want to speed you, which also includes slowing down or reversing at times, the Preussen can pretty much gain ground and get into secondary range. So you're essentially forced to perma run from them, which also limits your ways of dodging them. Like it's better to be in a position where you can go a bit more stationary and play with your throttle in both ways, kind of. Just being forced to run away because otherwise a German battleship runs you down with secondaries is fairly shit. Here I'm pretty much just cheesing the carrier. The game is still going for probably around a minute, a bit less, or the caps stick out. So I'm just keeping an eye on out if the Hindenburg will shoot him and I try to farm his uh, planes. Then I saw the Hindenburg shooting him so I just say finish it off, fuck it. As you can see. Um, we can go quickly over the captain skills. And I whoop up the next replay in about a second. Uh, captain skills, as I said, I dropped priority target and the speed boost skill, like, uh, and went for fearless brawl. Um, pretty much just because I played it in trainings and stuff. Uh, and I tried this out. It's pr it's really good. I like it a lot. Um, I don't think I need PT necessarily in, in competitive anymore. It's not that good. The mist or like the time you you lose on the speed boost is a bit sad let's say because it's like 30 percent uh combined like it's 10 percent on each speed boost fairly nice 
um, and you obviously don't spec superintendent again for another speed boost um, but fearless brawl does tend to increase your dpm like kind of kind of feels so much stronger and so much easier to get like your average and impact in the game done it's fairly nice also the dd traits are really really nice if you have aft and fearless brawl so you do not lose dpm on the dd but you also don't lose the option of actually being outside of the secondary range of ships aft pretty much mandatory on mars so i played it without aft uh, after release for like a year and then with the captain rework last year it's pretty much and therefore the secondary changes on the ranges where like every secondary ship has higher range now especially the german ones you essentially can't play without aft like there's no way you're going to effectively fight a schlieffen a preussen or a gk that are fully sex spec on tier 10 uh, without AFT, there's no way. You're like one and a half, no, 1.1 kilometers deep in their sec range, so there's no point anymore. Um, I did like it without AFT though, because it was way more like close up and risky playstyle. It's pretty cool, but whatever. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily uh, suffer, or I wouldn't necessarily want to suffer through the secondaries at this point. Um, modules, well, essentially, you have to play the speed boost module. As said, on Clap and Marsu, you're most likely not going to play um, the what's it called uh, superintendent skill, since the only thing you gain is on Marsu and DFA charge and a speed boost. On uh, Clap, it's also a reload boost, but it doesn't really matter. The three points are not worth that it, c since you can just stretch the speed boost duration with the module. So just play the module. On Marsu, I also tend to play the um, torpedo uh, speed skill, like 5% uh, more torps, since Marceau, especially then with Fearless Brawl and Adrenaline Rush, shits so many shells anyway, that I much rather like uh, the torps to be a bit faster, since Marceau torps tend, they do way less damage than the clap torps, and they're way slower. Uh, advantage of them is that since you have 7km conceal, instead of 7-8, and the torps have 9km range, your stealth torp range is actually incredible. So pushing into a Marceau, uh, especially if it's only a one versus one, like a battleship or cruiser, it's fairly disgusting. Like you can send twelve torps, and only one torp is enough to then start with your guns and like fire back at him. Let's hop into the next replay, which is uh, this time on trap. Same ship, obviously, same spec, everything the same. This time I'm in a division with my uh, clan mate Madara. He's in a daring, um, which gives also more opportunities honestly to play together sadly this game is not going too great for him but um, yes I spawned finally on a flank so this time sadly it's not the perfect map for actually pushing the flank deep but uh, the idea obviously is he stays more in the cap and also in the general area and down here so that he can torp a bit and if it comes to it and if people go dark behind rocks or push the corner I'm most likely going to go 9-10 line but in the beginning, by the way, don't pop your speed boost immediately. Um, this is... Uh, uh, don't pop your speed boost immediately, because you most likely don't have enough time to actually uh, uh, go g get to the end of the match uh, with, with having speed boost. You have to quickly... Um, have to quickly uh, restart the replay, because the... Dumbass minimap is not loading, which is fairly sad, but whatever, we deal with it. Some some replays are fairly bugged lately, also the... Uh, the submarine replays, I figured I tried to record a submarine replay three times in a row now, and the minimap is hilariously bucked in that sense, and I don't know why and what to do. Whatever, let's try that. The, let's let's look at the second start. So essentially, don't pop your speed boost right off the spawn unless you're in a really really good position to push a flank, like flanks that allow you to go close to an island, and the enemy DD is also most likely uh, on the opposite side of the map on the island, and then you pretty much run at each other, and you're so close because of your speed that he can't disengage through concealment anymore, which would be obviously the the main goal to play a flank with uh, instant speed boost popped and uh, rushing it down. So let's see if the replay actually works this time. We also have to go over the matchmaking real quick. Um, I should probably start cutting stuff, but uh, let's see. We can just talk more about uh, certain quirks. So let's hope that the minimap works. 
I was pretty much just a minimap that didn't update in this replay. Um, so the matchmaking, we have three DDs. Um, it's actually moving now. Yes, it is. Perfect. So we have three DDs and a submarine. We have three cruisers, no radar cruiser, which is really good, but a Smolensk, which is fairly bad. And we have five battleships. So uh, what you can tell, by the way, again, from divisions is that we are going to 100% face a Shemakaze, Gunlu, and Kreml. It's a f fair fairly straightforward 111 division, cruiser DD and battleship, and the trap division spawn is up at sea, so you're 100% facing them. There's like no way they're somewhere else. If there's a second division, it's obviously 50-50, which one you're going to face. Um, so yeah, something some people don't know, but if you get to know the division spawns on maps, you can pretty much easily tell who you're facing. Um, DD-wise, we do have a fairly nice time against the Shimmer and the Daring, they're not too scary. Especially the Daring is pretty much easy for me, because he's very fat, doesn't have the, like, the greatest, let's say, greatest DPM, because uh, in comparison to Sherman, his DPM isn't that good. Sherman is a big problem though. If he starts smoking and hydrating, there's l very little I can do with my Marceau, neither can Madara in his Daring. So, as said, he's probably going to play more this area, which is fairly obvious. Um, he can Torp spot more, and he can ha also has the Shirt short burst smoke. He can also take this forward position just because there is no radar and I'm just going to enter and going over towards the right side and then just see is the enemy actually trying to come for C or are they just running away? Uh, what exactly is happening? So <clears throat> I'm going to also pop the speed boost only when there is an actual like threat of getting shot at or being torped. Um, the submarine couldn't tell you where he spawns, probably middle, uh, if it's only one submarine they always spawn mid or something, I believe. Then again I've seen so many games where there are two submarines uh, in each team and they're both on a flank, like I don't know. Um, we can talk about submarines in another game I guess. So here it's essentially uh, like Kreml is a really good target for Kleb, Marceau and Ragnar to just do dot damage at you. Essentially just shoot him um, as long as you need to get a fire, which is this. Also, the obviously, since my division mate went where I told you, uh, we pretty much knew that the Shimmer is there. The Shimmer is reversed in, though, there's, so like, there's not really a way to catch him here. He can just pop his smoke and run away, so we try to do dot damage, but if he runs away, he runs away. I torped the corner here. I also will turn my ship to get the other side out, because me fighting the Kreml open water, and also the Shimmer, um, pretty much the smartest thing or the, the, the thing that I would ex expect from that goodness to actually face me on the corner because the corner uh, makes it pretty much impossible for my teammates behind me to shoot him if he just peeks it with his front turrets uh, hugging the island but he could assist his battleship and um, DD in actually fighting me. His dispersion might not be the greatest by the way obviously he, he was like about to send torps I wanted to torp the corner, so this is like pretty ju much just lucky timing. Like I, l I rolled the dice here on eating a torp essentially. He could have torped me with all three sets, and I probably eat one. And if I'm really unlucky too, there's like, yeah, I want I wanted to greedily uh, torp the corner against the Guden because I'm really convinced he peaks. In the end, he never peaks, um, which I don't get because the corner is like 9km away from me and Guden does have very fast uh, shells, also good arcs. His dispersion is the only thing that limits him, but he could definitely get some good hits in. So here I have to pretty much instantly disengage the Schlieffen secondary range, it's just a menace. Like you can once again see he has Lutjens because of the tracers and probably also the 6 million module, so yeah. Shimmer is spotted again, this time he uses the smoke, so there is once again no chance we actually spot him. And because the Schlieffen came into the corner and the Guden has very very low conceal, there's no reason for me to actually go into A10 at this point. The Schlieffen is pretty much a 12.5km zoning machine, which I can't uh, like. I can't get closer to the Kreml or Guden to farm them uh, if the Schlieffen decides to stay there, just because I have to go into secondary range. And the next problem is that I can't even spot the Guden for me actually. Like if the Guden just camps that rock, like his concealment is too good. Like if he doesn't shoot me and he was already unwilling to peek me, so most likely he will just stay there unspotted. The Sherman comes from mid in a very very weird angle. Also, you see like we both of us were never expecting that. Madara got completely caught out by the Hydro. Like he was Hydroed before we ev even spotted the Sherman. He didn't cap B. Like it's completely random. Both of us were really surprised. Um, that Sherman came from B. 
but he never kept it. So what's the point? Like we were in like, h how is the man here? Like why is he here? Um, well, he gets to jump Madara. Thankfully, I was really close, so I could trade in pretty much uh, a lot of HP and now finish him off and kill him, which is pretty much saving the game essentially. Like if that man just keeps smoking half HP or so with Hydros, there's very little I can do in this area. So Sherman trades versus Daring. Um, at least we made it a one for one. Uh, it could have gone horribly wrong if the German would have actually just gone straight line and moved and actually dodged. He would pretty much just went stationary in the smoke, so I could get a lot of blind fire and hits in. But I'm making my way to the middle now, and uh, obviously, like B, getting B here and cap capping it for free is pretty much uh, the best option. Uh, it is for free. The Shimakaz is most likely staying with his division. Uh, the submarine left B and is getting or is in between all our team, so. Um, just grab it at this point so it starts ticking and it also forces maybe the enemy team to move closer since they have to get C and B then. I'm spotted now so the Shimmer is on my right, uh, either on the left or the right side of the smoke. Um, and uh, the advantageous position that I can take here is... Ah, there it is. He actually gets caught here and I also decide, because I can just go behind the island so there is no threat of torps anymore, I just decide to slow down stay in his hard light and DPM him down. Like at this point there's no way, or the, it would be a misplay to run behind the island, not shoot him and not keep him spotted. The man dies, that's like something you have to get to know. If you can make your shots hit, especially that close range, Marsu DPM is fairly disgusting. So now I can stay here uh, and we're pretty much slowly but surely getting the same problem as last game. The enemy team's ship are way too healthy. I think on both sides even. While my team, as you can see on the minimap, are two German battleships, probably secondary spec, that are currently giving flat broadside to unspotted uh, ships as well. Like There are like three ships that are not even spotted, they can just sit behind islands and free farm. The only one who's actually peeking is the Guden. So I'd hope that the Kremlin gets spotted here again, because I saw him eat a twerp, so I wanted to get the permafire. Um, and essentially looking forward, there are two ships that are a big problem for me. That's the Schlieffen and the Guden. Um, later on also the Yoshino, but as you can see the Yoshino is literally sitting on the border and doing like weird shit. But killing those two ships is really good, because the Kreml is not a threat. I can pretty much kite him as long as I want, even in the cyclone. Like I can just stay at 8 kilometers and let him come into my heart detect and then go out again at any given time. But the Guden with Hydro, pretty fairly hard to twerp. And also his guns at sub 8 kilometers, which obviously is the range of engagement then, if the cyclone hits, he's most likely going to hit me. It's very, very unlikely he misses. I mean, if he's a really bad player, like if I would run matchmaking monitor, I could di make different assumptions, but I have to take the ship serious. Now I'm actually finally going to cap B. Um, the engagement was honestly fairly disadvantageous for us. I should have gotten the B cap a lot earlier, even though we don't have a point problem yet. Um, I honestly thought that the Kreml would either keep reversing or he would get spotted again or that I would also get fires on the Guden. I got very unlucky there on the Guden. I didn't get the like normal perma double fire that you should be getting on the Guden in this situation. Like he's just stationary getting farmed. Uh, which would essentially pretty much kill him. Like if I get a perma double there, he dies. So that's like a potential kill. But since I got unlucky with fires, never got a fire. Um, didn't really make sense in the end. But you don't know that beforehand. Now I'm in a really nice spot. Uh, they do have to push into C. And I have a Petro and a double battleship behind me. So there's like a buffer zone. They can't just run me down for free. Um, I'm getting B. There is no threat from the A side. So I can just go and stay here forever. Because if the engagement goes tits up on C with the four ships that are probably or most likely pushing now. If the engagement goes tits up, I can just use the cyclone, get into B, get unspotted. So I just pretty much reverse into them here. Uh, also, I got one plus 1% one fire chance now from Mr. Obomoyigi, which is really nice. Uh, actually, plus 2 already because I got the cap assist on C as well. So that's a fairly nice buff. Um, essentially, the, the Obomoyigi buff uh, of the fire is really really good but it only really works on Marceau because your concealment is actually so low that you can uh, go and cap on some maps. If the caps are too small on certain maps it's also fairly unlikely. But mid game you can definitely grab some caps and enhance your fire chance which is really cool. I managed to dodge that fairly well. I obviously pre-torped the Kreml push because 
none of the enemies are seeing none of our ships so they're just most likely going to blind rush in and try to get information which I can use now to as you can see stay at pretty much around 8 kilometers 7.8 7.9 so I'm torping him I also got torpids on the Guden I keep farming him and at some point he's now on a, on a fire soon as well he's already flooding I got another torpid on the Guden I think uh, lots of people are suffering in the background or even the Yoshino I don't know but if if it gets too dicey and people start to run me down I can just go dark and run run away from them with my speed boost in the in the storm which is really nice so thankfully my Petropavlovsk and Schlieffen are zoning for me so I can pretty much just stay behind them use their zoning to shoot the enemy without running the risk of them focusing me um, or closing the distance also uh, that was pretty much just a suicide rush from the Yoshino the Kreml wasn't as suicidal, but he pretty much didn't know that I would actually stay on the corner and just torpid. Um, though I didn't get why well, he moved a bit further into the cap. So at this point, the cap is contested, and there was a daring spotted in between A and B. So the daring is now in A, uh, in B, and I'm trying to use the island to cut distance. Sadly, he's already here, he's on the right. Uh, so essentially at this point, I just run him down. There's no way he out DPMs me, even if he's full HP. Uh, he's only on 5k, so that's a fairly easy pickup. He doesn't even smoke, but at this point, at this range, uh, he d even if he smokes, the delay is too long. It takes too long to actually put the smoke down, so I just kill him anyways. But that's something you can like kind of use for you in these big caps, like on trap. Like if the cap is contested, you obviously can pinpoint the enemy DD's position. That's why I instantaneously put my nose towards the other side of the cap. And I try to actually go to the island, so then I can pop out of the island and run him down. Because I didn't know his HP. I assume that he's like fairly full HP, uh, he wasn't. So now some some benefits of Marceau actually having 7km concealment instead of 7-8 uh, like clap. The storm is 8km and I can go for spotting runs. Probably it's just that the spotting delay is actually so hard, uh, so strong, that I only spotted that man at 7.5km. It gets, gets to show how shit the servers are actually, it was like 7.5, 7.6km, it wasn't 8, he wasn't like instantaneously spotted. So I obviously have to take the hit here. There's also no point in not shooting. Like, uh, I go dark at 7km, but I go dark through the cyclone at 8, so I just shoot and uh, obviously try to get the fire here. I also torp that, and actually shooting and, like, bailing towards the lower side, uh, like, keeps him occupied and baits him into shooting me and keeping his front turrets, which means he's not going to turn either fully in or out, because he wants to shoot back and front turrets on me, so I get the nice little torp hits here. Um probably uh, hydro on cooldown that's like a 50 50 with german bbs they can have hydro on they can have hydro off i mean nothing you can do doesn't matter what torp did you are but i'm trying to hunt him now because obviously he repaired like i had five torp hits without a flood which is <laughs> obviously uh the torps hit when his dcp was on uh so i just tried to hunt him here stop immediately get the fire get the dpm and reverse out of the cyclone range so I don't have to uh, go deeper into secondaries or something. Just go in, get yourself the 30, like 20 to 30 seconds of shooting, uh, reverse out at the same time, and then go dark. And now he has a perma fire on, on his ship, and obviously is going to burn down. So there are definitely some nice ways of outplaying enemies, especially uh, capital ships or DDs like battleships and DDs in storm. Cruisers are something that you most likely won't outplay unless you can rush them around islands but you don't really need a cyclone for that. But battleships since they're so slow and DDs because you can close the distance to them so easily without uh, most of their team actually being able to support them. Um, a really nice prey for French DDs like Marceau and Clem. So at this point the Guden survived the jousting at sea with my team. They're like a million dead ships in sea currently. A complete grave. Yamato is picking up A, Colombo as well. I have no clue what they did. I think there was a battleship left, so that's why they went there. Uh, and now I'm pretty much just using the island. I'm going towards the island and I'm using the cap once again to pretty much get information on when the Guden enters. The Guden plays RPF for whatever fucking reason. I don't know. Um, RPF Guden might be very meta soon. I don't know. Uh, but essentially, just going to the rock here, there is no way or very little chance that he enters on the complete left of the cap, like in front of me on the left. Uh, he's most likely going to enter center or on the right, 
since this is like his angle of approach. And I'm just waiting here on spotted and getting the information on when he's going to enter the cap. Speed boost comes off cooldown, that's what I also mentioned with uh, pace yourself with the speed boost usage. Re only use it in the beginning when you can actually uh, jump someone uh, or it's fairly likely you can jump someone. Otherwise uh, keep them like sometimes just reposition without speed boost so you have the entire duration of the game. Now the cap obviously is contested, he's in, I have 7.7k, one front turret salvo is most likely not going to kill me but now I can uh, close the distance fast enough to get into torp range. So yeah, I mean he gets a very nice hit here since I was mostly spammed by uh, AP battleships actually, that was what I took the most damage from so I'm not HE saturated yet. Um, so good hit, double fire, but I'm so close now that I can also pretty much out turn his turret, finish him off, and get the Kraken. So that's the game. We actually have the end screens for that one. I don't have the ones for the last game. The last game was like 3.5 base, 308k damage or something. This one is not 300k, but uh, it's fairly nice, like 5 kills. Uh, I got 11 torpids, which is a lot. Uh, which also shows that you can definitely make use of more so torps. Um, I would even say more so torps are uh, a bit more viable in randoms unless you're only looking at the rushing opportunities. Obviously, club is better in, in these situations. More damage, faster torps, faster to reload. But more so torps are over a 20 minute game more viable. Like you can, you can position yourself so well in front of an enemy push, and you can just uh, constantly in like two two and a half minute intervals. Uh, spam 12 torps into them, which is really nice. Um, kept a bit, uh, obviously nice with the fire chance of the captain, so you even get rewarded for playing objective. That was only 3.2k base. Um, my division mate sadly got jumped by the one for one Sherman that pretty much suicided in for him, which is, which came at a very unopportunistic time, let's say, like we couldn't have known. Uh, obviously most of the damage comes from the uh, battleships, we have like 95 and 91k on two BBs. Uh, obvious if you have a 300k game that most of it comes from BBs unless you're playing like USS Sus and constantly one-shotting cruisers with your tech squadrons or a battleship itself that nukes like five cruisers. Um, bit damage of the Guden, then obviously the DDs uh, and actually now I see it, it's 36k on the Yoshino pretty much means I hit three torps on him. So that was the guy who was sucking up all the torps behind the Kremlin unspotted. Yeah, okay. Um, once again, the captain's back, but I'm most likely going to end the video. If you have any questions about how to play it or why I did certain things, just feel free to ask. Um, for randoms, I would actually most likely switch back to speed boost duration and, and like the, the third skill in the second row and priority target, because I just feel more comfortable with it. But for now, I kind of enjoy the higher DPM as well. But in the end, it doesn't really change much. Um, one thing gives you more utility to farm safer uh, or longer with the speed boost. The other thing gives you straight up more DPM. So you you be the judge. I did notice a slight increase in like average. Um, then again, I prioritize, let's say, I prioritize uh, a good time. No, not, not a good time. That's wrong. I like a more like I enjoy a more relaxing build where I have uh, more utility at hand, where I can just uh, relax more because the game gives me like more information. Let's say it like this. Once again, the commander, uh, the the spec of the ship itself. Um, yeah, nothing special there. So that's it for me. Um, that is two more soul games in a row. Um, both of them really lucky, obviously. Like people ignoring me. Uh, battleships sh pushing into me without getting focused from my team but you can kind of see that uh, good positioning in Marceau and also like rotating a bit in the mid game like on the last map now where I went into the middle is kind of where you get the big damage numbers from like you can obviously focus yourself on just going on the flank and perma farming whatever is in your uh, in your f in your gun range but the strength of the French DDs is obviously the rotatability, like actually being able to move mid-game. That's also why I picked up the Marceau lately again, just because battleships are too slow and I get pretty much a bit bored by spamming them. But yeah, so as I said, any questions or if you have anything that you would like me to improve about these, uh, ga these videos, uh, unless the 
little black screen in the middle of the video where I switched replays. Uh, feel free to address them and I hope you have a great week. I hope you can understand a bit better how I play them. Uh, might not be perfect, but it certainly is better than uh, a lot of other players. And yeah, feel free uh, to pick up Mercer yourself and have a great week.